key feature of the Talent Centre portfolio. It's a portfolio they want to expand here in Mauritius. And they felt that by um, linking with a global company like ourselves, we could both benefit. Tell us a bit more about your company, Kenzie okay. Fraser. Kenzie Fraser is um, a training organisation. We're based in the UK. We're part of a larger global international company called Demos. Demos is um, head office is based in Paris, France, but has a presence in 16 countries. So we have offices, subsidiaries in 16 countries. Hemsley Fraser is one of them. Mm -hmm. Hemsley Fraser itself was created, created by an ind uh, a man, an individual called Ian Lovett. And his vision was to create small group interactive learning for the public. He saw the fact that we uh, had small groups as a huge gap in the market. There was lots of training around large groups, large performance, uh, a train, uh, someone lecturing. And the idea of having small groups allowed us to concentrate on the learner, deal with their needs, and to address the learning. And so this was something new at the time, 20 years ago, in the UK. Um, it proved hugely successful, and we very quickly became one of the learning um, the key learning organisations in the UK at that time. DEMOS was created in 1972 in a similar way by one man. It was a vision that he had uh, as the president, Jean Vanet, who is still our president today. And he and his family created a learning organisation in DEMOS, in France, in DEMOS, and that has grown and evolved by acquisition over the many years. Hemsley Fraser and Demos came together in 2008 when they purchased the Hemsley Fraser Group. They, um, there was a synergy between the products that we offered. There was a synergy between the cultures of the two organisations. And so the coming together has really been a happy marriage. The advantage to both organisations is that it has provided us with a huge reach globally, allowed us to go into all kinds of countries, work very closely with some very major global clients. So our reach, even though we have offices in 16 countries, we have a presence, so we have training presence, so that's trainers who live in the country in 57 countries. That's, including Mauritius? That's Mauritius not including Mauritius, okay. so Mauritian, Mauritius makes us 58. Okay. Our whole emphasis, the whole company's ethos, is around interactive training, application of learning back in the workplace. And so if you then look at Talent Centre and what the vision is for this group, there's such a close relationship between the two of us. Change from within. So it's about changing our lives. It's about changing the way we work. It's about improving things. Was your experience in the hospitality industry help you to become a better trainer because I've seen uh, there are a list of hospitals that have been training uh, officials in, in hospitals. Yeah. Um, hospitals, it's a service industry. Y you, it, yes, it's a medical, but it is about service. It's about the technical side of what is delivered, but there's also about the customer service. It's about what we do. It's about how we care for the people that we, um, we deal with. So because you're providing a service, um, it's really important that the, the surgeons, the nurses, etc., are aware of the people that they are healing, helping to, to make better. And if you compare that to the hospitality industry, 
which is really strong in Mauritius. It, there's a, so, so many similarities. It's about understanding the people you serve. Yeah, it's can. about making sure that the managers, the, the, the customer service, the, the waiters, whatever, really know and understand the people they're delivering that service to. So there is a kind of synergy there. Is it important to train the trainers? We believe within the Demos group, absolutely. Um, we are very clear, Hemsley Fraser Demos, that we have a very high standard, a very high quality standard of trainers. And any trainer who represents our organization or works <coughs> in a, any kind of association with us must undergo a validation exercise, a, two, a, a day to day validation exercise. And when Talent Center approached us, uh, my key first thing I think I said to them was, yes, we can talk about this. However, I am not prepared to move forward unless your trainers are validated and reach the standards that we, that we maintain and that we expect. What are these standards? Very much around um, quality. Really key qu about the quality of the product that we deliver. Um, it's about the quality of the way we present ourselves. There are key criteria that we assess people on. So it's everything from the subject matter knowledge, the subject matter expertise, through to the way the topic is delivered, the body language, the presence, the voice, and the style of delivery. We very much believe in interactive delivery. We like people to have what we call experiential learning. So it's not just about sitting in a classroom and listening to a lecture and watching a PowerPoint presentation or a board. It's getting involved, it's getting hands-on. It's, it's learning yourself. It's about you as the, as the delegate exploring and learning yourself, not just about delivery. So it's really important that we ensure our trainers understand that style, are able to do it and have the capability and skills to do that. And that's the process that we're going through at this moment here at the Talent Centre. And so for how many trainers of the Talent Centre? We, we currently uh, have nine, which is a great representation for um, a, start, a start. That's a great representation. Have you, have you been able to assess the, the level? When, when you came in, so, yes. so you can have an idea at the end what yes. has been the, the, the yes. progress? Absolutely. At the beginning, um, I observed and each, um, each trainer was given a test. Um, three elements. One around um, facilitation style and skills. One around design and interaction with clients. So if they had to go and work with a client outside of talent center, a you know, company, a business. And thirdly, around teamwork and interpersonal skills. And so there were um, one day's tests, if you would like to put it that way, where people um, were invited to deliver a demonstration of their facilitation skills. There was a case study exercise and there were some team activities. And uh, that was undertaken the first two days, I think I was here. And now we're moving on to um, looking at the style and the delivery. I also undertook some um, psychological tests, so there was some t um, feedback given. Um, and yes, it's been hugely successful so far, hugely successful. And how long does the training last? The training um, lasts, we're here, I'm here until 22nd, I'm losing touch of the dates. Uh, yeah, 22nd. Uh, basically, we're working and um, we're doing one day, I'm doing one day of input and then the rest of the time we are studying the courses that are going to be delivered going forward here from the Talent Centre. The Talent Centre are going to deliver uh, in partnership with Hemsley Fraser Demos <coughs> and are going to be delivering a very wide variety of catalogue courses looking particularly at the management and leadership and personal development areas for the moment. And I think we have agreed around 50 or plus courses. And 
um, they will be moving forward over the next month provided they pass their test which we're not quite finished that yet and they'll be moving forward over the next month and they will be delivering the courses here in the, in the training centre here and uh, so after a day's input we're then going to be studying some of the courses and looking at how they would be delivered and utilised here in the UK. Okay, so you need to validate the courses that they need to be offered here too? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. So what are, we, what are you going to share? Apart from the courses, all the paperwork, what are personally you are going to share with, with this trainer of 25 years of experience? Um, I think just that, my experience, um, I'm sharing what's gone right, I'm also sharing what's gone wrong, and I'm sharing where I've made mistakes and where you learn from the mistakes, but also giving tips, ideas, thoughts from my own experience, um, how to deal with certain situations, how to enliven the training, how to make it this experiential experience that we were looking for in the training room, which is quite new. Um, it even has been new in the UK. We've only been doing this for a few years in the UK. Um, and I know it's going to be brand new in, in Mauritius. Um, so it's really, really key that the guys and the team really know what they're going to be doing and, and really understand what they're doing. And what exactly will be the target audience over here? The target audience will be um, anything from um, what I would classify as a team leader, so a supervisor team leader, across all industries, all, all um, organisations, right through in actual fact to senior middle manager board level. There's a range of courses. So we have the core management, which would be first line managers, supervisors, team leaders. Then we have a section that deals with middle managers, managers who manage managers. And then we have the, the board level. Now just talk about leaders. What is a good leader according to you? A good leader, whoa. Um, I think a good leader has to have passion for what they do. I think they have to be a good role model. They must listen and work with their team, not be in isolation. And I think they must have the ability to bring the team together to, it, to look and follow a vision, a focus and a strategy. And they must have the ability to be able to present that strategy in a clear way to bring the team with them. Basically, you should want to choose a training in management and leadership instead of going to, let's say, to the university and yeah. just get a degree, like an MBA or something. Of course. I think academic qualifications are hugely important. However, the difference about this training is the actual opportunity to learn to do. This is about active learning. It's about doing. It's about practicing and doing things in a safe environment. Um, we all, none of us like to fail, none of us like to make mistakes, but we all have to learn and after you've achieved your academic qualifications, it's really important that you're able to take that knowledge and develop the skills and behaviour to ensure that the team comes with you and this is an opportunity to do that. It's an add-on to any academic qualification. It's For me, it's like the next stage, it's, you know, I've learned the knowledge, now I need to know and have a go at how to do it. So would you say that uh, what you, the training that you will be administrating is what's missing in our educational system or the way the courses are administered to students? I would say it's the next stage rather than missing at that particular time. Uh, my experience, my global experience is that in many countries the academic institutions, the academic system is, is invaluable. It, it's really, really good. And we have some very highly talented, very capable young people. In, uh, I'm discovering that more and more young people are promoted to senior positions because they have such, such academic qualifications and such knowledge. But it's very different when you actually have to sit in front of a, a group of people, a team of people, and delegate an activity to them, delegate a task, 
deal with a conflict situation to people who perhaps don't get on very well. So this form of training helps to support. So missing is probably not quite the right word, but certainly an add value to the academic training. So you have also a great experience in HR human resources? I do. Yes. Some times ago, HR was uh, meant like higher and fire. Yes. Now it is higher and we retain. So just talk about promotion. Sometimes companies give promotion to retain somebody. Mm -hmm. So wh what are your feelings about this, this new concept of, of each HR now? Um, I think it's definitely a good thing. I think it's the way to go. Um, one of the frustrations, you, you referred earlier to my work in the health service. One of the frustrations I had when I was in the health service is that we would invest lots and lots of money in training someone technically. We would make sure that this, the nurse had the best skills, etc. And then she, she or he would reach a point in their career and then to move to the next stage, they'd leave and they'd go to another hospital. And we'd have to start again with the next person. And so there was this cycle of people being trained to a point. I, was in, I worked in a teaching hospital. So we used to take them to a point and then they'd move on. And then um, we, we looked at it and we said, well, why are we letting these valuable people leave? What can we do to engage them, to keep them with us, to benefit from all the investment we've put in their initial training? So when we talk about the new HR style, if you want to put it that way, I truly believe that's correct. If you, if you can provide career development for, for the people within your organisation, you can afford to invest in them. And you know what? You can never, never um, eliminate the power of the experience of having worked in an organisation from the bottom up. That's such a strength. And so you know what it's like to do the job, you've experienced it, you've seen it. And then here, wow, this is fantastic. My organisation here in Mauritius is going to allow me to develop my skills even further. So I can move to the next career step within this organisation. And I can develop my skills. So I definitely feel that a combination of the academic and the tactical training, the tactile training is, is really, really important and definitely the right way to go for all kinds of organisations. Was it helping with promoting talent centres? <laughs> <laughs> Well, to a degree, yes, but you know what? I really believe in what Talent Centre are trying to do. If I didn't, quite honestly, I wouldn't be here. I'm not being funny. I could be any other part of the world working, doing this kind of thing. But um, the passion I see here, the vision for what they want to do in Mauritius and what they want to bring to Mauritius, the fact that they've had the courage to come and talk to a company like ours, an organisation like ours and be prepared to take on board our advice, opportunities, all credit. I think that's great and I think this is going to be a powerhouse for Mauritius. I truly, truly, truly believe that. Have you had to like adapt certain things to Mauritius, like locally, certain things to different, like the language or the culture? Have you had to adapt certain things in the training according to that? Absolutely. As we're working together over these years, we're very much looking at um, a style that we have in UK, America, and we're saying, okay, here's a style. Will it work for the culture in Mauritius? What might we do to adapt it? Um, what could we build on? What could we do differently? And it's really been encouraging that we've been able to be very transparent and very open and be able to do exactly that, to a adapt a format and say, yes, it will work in this way for Mauritius. And that's the work that will continue here in Talent Centre, that they will take the basic style that we have and adapt and adjust. And that happens all over the world, whichever mm -hmm. culture we go and work in, we have to uh, adapt to that. Any barriers so far? Absolutely none. 
quite, quite honestly, um, I've just met with complete openness and, and complete willingness mm -hmm. to listen, to try. But I think that goes both ways. Um, I'm not sitting here saying you must do it like this. We're bringing ideas together and working together, which is really, really important. So have you been able to visit a little bit Mauritius? Not yet, <laughs> but um, I'm here for, uh, my assignment here finishes on 27th of August and I'm taking the opportunity and then I'm going to have two weeks holiday while I'm here and I'm going to spend my time exploring this beautiful island. I've fallen in love with the island. Um, I could come and work here tomorrow. I just love this place and I love the centre. You know, the centre is, is so good. It's one of the best facilities I've seen and I've done many, many travels. And um, yeah, it would, it's good. It, would be, it is a pleasure and will be a pleasure to work here with the team going forward. And yes, yeah, I think I'd probably move to Mauritius tomorrow. <laughs> I just love it so much. Uh, and if this is winter, give me more. <laughs> this is lovely. Okay. <laughs> um, tell us about your personal motto. My personal motto. My personal motto. Wow. <laughs> um, I. I believe in the development of people. I believe that everyone should be given the opportunity to develop. And my passion is when I'm part of that process. And um, we have an expression in the UK which is um, when you have a light bulb moment. I don't know if that translates well here. But it's that moment when the switch just goes on in someone's head or someone's eyes. You can see it in their eyes when you're training them and they go, yes, I've got this. That's my mojo. When I sit there in a training room and someone goes, wow, I've got it. Or it just, their eyes light up. That really, really drives me. I have a last, last question yeah. concerning HR. What have changed from when you started 25 ago <gasps> up to up to here? In a short sentence, what have changed okay. according to you? Okay, I think we've gone from being police people and um, the welfare people right the way through to I think we use the word the holistic approach to thinking about them as whole people, whole experience. Work life is part of home life um, and people have desire and drive and for, for me HR is not just the policing, you, the disciplining, the recruiting, it's about the developing and it's helping people to learn and de develop and grow. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you.